Adams here, Mr. Broadhouse here, Mr. Galnett here, Mr. Romero here, Madam Mayor here. 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 Approval of the agenda. We have to add under new items F Black Hills quote. Under new. Under new. Can I get approval of the agenda with the addition of the Black Hills? I, I move that we the agenda is written with the addition of Black Hills Quote. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Barajas? Yes. Ms. Gellner? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorn? I didn't hear what, the, uh, what he said. What did you say? I approve the with the addition of the Black Hills Quote. Okay, here. You have a microphone? Thank you. Mr. Thorne? Yes. Uh, I should, uh, yes, for it. Approval of the regular meeting minutes for August 22nd, 2024. I make the motion that we accept the minutes for August 22nd. Second. Roll call. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Brahas? Yes. Ms. Galnett? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? You would have to yes. stay in your For the regular meeting? You were here for that one? Yeah, he was here. It, just, it was the last one that we had, the special meeting that he was in. I did watch the video, uh, so would I be able to remark on that? Jacobo? I don't care what I think. Well, he was here. You were here for that yeah. special yeah. meeting on the August the 28th. You were here. Yeah, he's been here. You only missed one meeting. Yeah, so we're asking if you want to approve the special meeting for August the 28th. We need a motion to approve the special meeting for August 28th. I motion we approve the special meeting for August 28th, 2020. Four. Second. Roll call. Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Brahas? Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? Yes. A motion to approve 
the special meet, meeting minutes for September 17th, 2024. Can I get a motion? I make a motion to accept the minutes for the meeting of September 17th, 24. Second. Roll call. <coughs> Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Brojas? Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? September what? 27. Seven. I haven't got that one. It's 17. 17. That's the one you missed. I would think you'd have to abstain, right? Yeah, that's right. what you was in here. Yes. Yeah. You'll have to abstain. I watched this on video. I wasn't physically here. So I might. You didn't call in. Didn't you didn't notify them that you were going to watch it online or on Zoom because you couldn't watch it on Zoom. Oh, jeez. I didn't notify uh, that I was watching it on Zoom, but I did tell Angela that there's a strong possibility I wouldn't be here. I mean, so am I like penalized because I missed the meeting? Did you notify the council that he was not going to be here? No, I don't really remember. I mean, you could have said oh, it, wow. but I've got about a million things on my plate right now, so if I missed it. It's my bad. My bad. Well, you could spank me. <laughs> I missed the meeting. I did. Think. What did you want? To do? What was that one? You want to. You will not make comments. We're having a meeting, okay? I will make any comments. No, you won't. I have the right. Because if I have to ask you to leave, I will ask the officers to escort you out. Thank you. Please Please you. This is your first warning. Excuse me, excuse me. Down, officer, Robert. Wait, hold on a second. No. The you officer, don't have the, the floor. The deputy cannot remove anybody if they don't pose a physical threat to somebody no, in the room. No, let me tell you. a comment. You just move right past it. But. I'm going to read you something because I'm not, this meeting is, you're not going to make a circus like you did with Donald. But you're making it that no, way. No, I'm not making a circus. But you're a cross between you Donald don't have the floor and Tyra. You guys didn't even make a motion to the agenda, uh, amend the agenda, so this meeting really isn't even legal or not. There was no motion. You just approved it. There was a motion. I don't know where no. you were, but we'll she go said, ahead. Excuse me, you don't have the floor. Well, You're not meeting. You don't know how to run the meeting. So somebody has to tell you how. So we have. It's good public. The town has an ordinance, okay? Mm -hmm. A person commits disrupting lawful assembly if intending to prevent or disrupt any lawful meeting procession or gathering he or she significantly obstructs or interferes with the meeting procession or gathering by physical action verbal utterance or any other means and when was this disrespecting lawful assembly <coughs> is misdemeanor right. when so was this and it passed? will be enforced that when is why we have two passed? officers it has never been enforced because um, Robert, you do not have the floor. Donald is, has asked them to remove me seven times, not oh, two or three, seven, and they I, have never Mr. removed Rambler, me I'm not because ask I you have again. not violated that ordinance. Sir? All right, listen up, guys. So here's the thing: you guys recall Donald? Part of the reason we didn't enforce Donald was because he did not. You know the gavel she's using? That's part of her trying to keep the um, meeting moving. All right. So unfortunately, she is correct on this part. But she won't tell me the date. The I, 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 I know. Passed. I think, and I could be wrong, but isn't there a public, like a spot where you get to step up there towards the end of the meeting and bring that yeah, up? Yeah, my name's on there. Okay. Yes, there. Right. but when, when it's her turn to no, talk, I, I, I just, no, yeah, I'm I clarifying it for her because no, I don't need she, to she, she, she's listening to me. Okay. <laughs> so that that is the main thing. If when you get your chance, bring it up. Okay. So We're not going is, to let doing, this meeting be disrupted. She is the reason the meeting has started because I missed the meeting. Uh, and so I didn't know. 
I never heard that you it's, were not I, going I to the meeting. Oh, okay. It isn't that talking. we okay. don't care. We don't. There's, you know. Is there a penalty or punishment for me missing the meeting? No, you just have to abstain so, from voting you because you weren't there. Well, I didn't. She did. So. Why did I start? That's it. Okay, so that's the bottom. It's All done. I said yeah. was you guys are being the, board, the board was not advised Point of order, Mayor. about you not coming. That's all I said, Vernon. By abstaining, it's not penalizing you in any way. The first meeting that I was here, I, abs I didn't abstain when I wasn't there at a previous meeting because I was just seated abstaining just means you weren't here that's all it means right yes and the only question i asked was you know that i watched it on zoom and was i able to comment that was the only question you know it's not that to me it's not that big of a deal if you don't want me to comment that's fine i'll bring it up at a, you know if i if it's that important i'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting but all this just because feelings are hurt or however this is going Yes, I missed the meeting. I apologize for missing the meeting. I should have called the office. I didn't. I talked to someone else. So can we continue? Are you on roll call? So do you move to him. accept his to vote or I'm abstain? Just... Are you going to abstain? Or are you going to vote? I don't know. Allowed to do either. I don't know. We'll poll the board and see what they say. Hmm. So what do we need to do just so we can move on? I, I don't care either way. I just, if he watched it, I don't care if he comments. If, if we need to do abstain, it, it, it doesn't really... When it's all said and done, it really doesn't matter to me. <laughs> we call um, Sue Lawson up, please. <laughs> last meeting you asked us to give you time to get things together and to sort things out correct yes. okay then we deserve the time to react okay every one of you were voted in by them okay we don't work for you you work for us number one number two Last meeting, you broke your own rules by amending a special meeting agenda. Okay? If you don't want us to break rules, don't you do it too. Okay? I'm, I'm not intimidated by you. Okay? I don't think you have the um, mentality or temperament, temperament to be the mayor. Okay? And you're proving that. You don't get to disrespect us, or Linda. <laughs> They're not bothering me. It doesn't matter. They're disrupting the meeting. Right. They didn't disrupt anything. Are you going to finish your? I am finished. I am finished. Okay. Um, we did not break by amending the agenda. We found out that we can amend the agenda in a special meeting. We just found out it's in the service of manual, correct, Sarah? Okay, well, then I'll give you that one. I'll take that back. But we're watching you as closely as you're and watching us. We are asking for time. There's, you know, I'm not really sure what you guys don't understand. 
there's a lot a mm -hmm. lot and you guys know because you brought it out and, and i'm not taking anything away from Bernie mm -hmm. because he brought everything to life okay mm -hmm. but now let us do our job there's a lot i mean meetings were not attended you know and we just have a lot to do a lot and i i, I get I that i do that get that from the last i don't know two mm -hmm. years three years probably from two mayors ago you know and, and so because everything was neglected i have everything on my plate that was another question speaking of everything on your plate um the last meeting you said you were uncomfortable putting your name to the reports and your response was well who's gonna do it isn't that your job no. You're the mayor. No. You're the one in it charge. Was, see, there's a misunderstanding here. We are only doing letters of acceptance. We're not approving because we have nothing to do with the budget that are missing. And Sarah did? No. But, but Sarah works in the office, okay? So I'm not sure, quite sure what you're not understanding. This is, she was here, I wasn't here. And and so it was explained to us, correct, Angela? Right. It's so a letter. Let me clarify this. Of okay. <coughs> the letters from James Ray, the one that's handling the audits now, okay? Um, he went through and kind of explained, and basically what he needed us to sign off on was the complete mismanagement of the the previous year's books and that he needed us to sign off that what he could compile mm -hmm. was the best that he could do and was to our the best of our knowledge was the best that he could pull together and that we'll accept that basically and so both Erlinda and i signed off on that so we could get the 2019 budget has now been officially submitted, or not the budget, the audit to the state. Thank okay, you. Okay, to Crystal Dorsey. Okay. And he is, James Ray is work. I, I think he might be maybe halfway through 2020. We're, my, my, that's what I said, we're playing catch up. It's I not understand. About being rude. It's not about, but we have a lot, and, and it's like everybody thinks that. We're supposed to fix this, you know. And we you want know, you to fix it, uh, and we're, we're willing. To fix it. We're willing, okay, to work with you as a team. I just asked them when do the meetings, the the workshops come back? They'll, they'll come back. We you just know, have some look out why have, have we lost we have some with. things we have gained? Just, that okay, was one. that was one that we missed. Yeah. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll bring them back. But the point that I'm trying to make the most, most of us want to work with you, okay. But we want to be worked with. We don't want to be disrespected. We don't want to be intimidated or made to feel like we don't matter. That was the problem before. We're not, I, I don't feel like I'm making you feel intimidated. I'm not, this is me. This is who I am. And we're in progress. Maybe, maybe a little, maybe just a little more kindness. Okay. Your three minutes are up. Thank Pardon? You. Oh yeah, they've been up. up. Thank you. Thank you. Did the council vote on signing off on 2019? No. They didn't. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something that should go to the council before you did it? No, they, they were made aware that it was done, and they she only was. needed. There's where Angela and I fell down. So the two of you make decisions around the council? We didn't. We brought it to the council and told them that it was done and there's where we were trying to sign. Nobody wanted to sign it. I just asked you that and you said no. You just said no. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Joshua Lloyd. Good evening. So, last meeting you said the people asked for a new mayor and a new board, correct? 
Okay. Correct. Wait and talk, and then I'll answer when you're done. Uh, it was a rhetorical question, so don't worry about answering my questions, please, and don't interrupt me. Thank you. So they asked for a new board and a new mayor. They recalled Donald for the same things that you were doing. You just lied right in front of freaking everybody. I am so sick and tired of seeing these people not being treated correctly. I am so sick and tired of not seeing transparency. You know what else I'm sick and tired of? I'm sick and tired of you guys not handling your responsibilities. So these are letters of intent that Mr. John Denicola sent in. And Sarah and Stephanie sent it back. Certified mail sent it back. Okay, let me stop you. No! Right Don't now. interrupt my three minutes! Do not Don't interrupt me. my three minutes! Don't interrupt my three minutes! Lower your voice. I know, I know the time. He's going to keep his three minutes, but he doesn't do lower his voice. No. Do not, do not do interrupt my three, three minutes. Do voice. not interrupt me. That is very disrespectful. Uh -huh. Very disrespectful. Again, these people put you into power. You didn't put yourselves into power. You keep treating these people like you have been treating them. Guess what? You're going to be the second mayor recalled. Right after the election. Ma'am? Sorry. I will have you removed. <coughs> this is my last warning. She can make comments during my three minutes. No. How about that? No. Yeah, she can because I gave her permission. No. Yeah. No. All right. I tell you what. Considering as how you want to keep interrupting me, I get my three minutes back. That's fine. Go ahead. Great. Fuck. Shit. Come slut dumpster. Tyrant. Would you remove him, please? No, that's my freedom of speech. No. Yes, Just it is. That is my freedom of speech. Remove me. Remove me now. Remove me now. So I have a 1983 claim against you. He can come over here and tell us to F off as long as he wants. Give him his three minutes and then leave. So, Dan. You can go ahead and you want to talk about disrespect and disrespect uh, all the women in the audience? Okay, go ahead. I, that is my freedom of speech. If ahead. they get offended by my freedom of speech, that's their problem. Go ahead. Someone you have your three minutes. minutes. Reset him. Reset him. Go ahead. Josh, they don't care about us. Very. You clear every chance they get. <coughs> who, who rules? As a rule, you know, guys. Okay. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. You're cool. Fuck you. I'm out. <laughs> Robert Avila. <laughs> Oh yes, ma'am. I just have a couple things I want to talk about. Um, the first one was, are um, you guys going to reprimand Gerald for giving Stephanie permission to write uh, Ken Torres' check after the board said that they were supposed to vote and approve all of the checks? Which check are you talking about? The last one that was written to him was it thirty seven hundred? I don't know. You 
So it was the one that she talked about at the August 22nd meeting. So from August 22nd, we just went through bills and two meetings ago approved June and July, and we did not approve anything for Ken Morris. Right, but at that meeting, Stephanie specifically said that um, Gerald gave her permission to write that check and give it to him. I do kind of remember something about that. I think it might have sure. been good. Gerald was seeing that the last pay we checked with him, but I don't know the date off my head, but we checked with Gerald to do payroll for us, and we finished checking. So Gerald was probably the interim mayor at that time, but he did not get that approved for the board after the board voted to have all right. of the checks yeah, well, approved by the board. Is that one of the ones that bounced? Yeah. It did clear. I think that was Tim's very last check we came in since you guys didn't see it with, I can go run and check really quick if I need to pull it. Yeah, I mean, just rest assured he has not received another penny since then if that was approved right which shouldn't have been approved uh, it, should it should have been, been approved, approved by, by the board Absolutely. and not just gerald i will look into it thank you um the only other thing i wanted to talk about was um just something that sue um was saying uh if there's more um if there's better interaction with the board members and the mayor and the public, um, none of us will want to start talking in the middle of the meeting. That's understandable. You, again, it, it's hard. You know, I've sat out there too in that audience and w was looking at all the people up here going, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? And, and we just say, we right. know that there's been issues with past mayors, right. past right, uh, it, town. And it was real easy for me to sit out there and, you know, point my finger and make judgment at all the people sitting out here until I got into this seat. And it was like, holy crap. Um, the amount of emails, the amount of, I mean, I've been on this board two months and I have got a box this big full of paperwork already that we're trying to get through and trying to clean up right. literally 15 years of the press. Right. And most of us are willing to, to work with you guys on that, and we're glad that you're going to start up the workshops again. Yep. And that was our solution to this, was the workshops that we've had one. Right, and we, we, we had to again. skip one, but we had a couple of things, like I said, some legalities and things that came up um, that we needed to get through, but they, they will start again, and, and I think we should actually probably try to schedule the one for next month. Right. Well, next we're month and then every a special meeting. Thursday of the month, though, right. and the legalities, I think, what we, I was told was COVID. You know, so that too, yeah. I was exposed to COVID. Erlinda was exposed to COVID. I sit next to, you know, a senior person. I'm at risk. I have, you know, um, comorbidities. Um, you but know, there's the several doesn't people. stop because a member can't be here. Yeah, I, and we're, we're going to work on that in the future. We, If somebody can't attend, just like you couldn't, you could actually sit in by Zoom to comment and still participate, you know, just like other the attorneys and, you know, other people have. So we're going to make sure we do that going forward. Um, however, it was, um, you know, Erlinda was showing signs of possibly having it, and I was really highly exposed um, to my neighbor. And she had tested positive and I was helping her because she had to go to the hospital. And so it was like, and, and I was feeling a little off myself. So I wasn't going to chance it. Okay. Okay. That, those are the only two things I want to talk about. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Ken? Okay, there. Just one. To, uh, there's three issues I'm bringing up. Uh, thanks for removing the steel beams from Romero Street at the bank building. You're welcome, sir. Thanks, And uh, the issue of stray dogs killing cats, dogs that uh, got in, a dog that got into Ringo's had to be literally chased out of there. Uh, I noticed the dogs, they don't have any collars. And, and it's a big abandoned. problem. And if I didn't have 20 other things on my plate, 
that's kind of my uh, one of my passions are the animals. Okay. And believe me, if, if I could do something about that right this moment, I would. I'm sorry, but go ahead. Anyway. Okay, the recycle cans. I wonder if they're going to be returned because I was using them. I'm sorry, the what? The recycle cans. Um, next, Bob, next year. Bob at um, the Mercantile had mentioned possibly, you know, as a gift to the town, bringing those back. Um, I used them too extensively, and now I've got the back of my car loaded up with recycle. So, um, you know, if, if Bob isn't willing to do that generous gift for us, I'd like to put that to as, you know, it's not necessarily priority we've got a lot of other really important things to deal with yeah. but as soon as the money frees up a little bit i would love to get those back i think that bob brought me showed me an article mm -hmm. so if for next year mm -hmm. right bob if you have so the town has a, a trash service so we would qualify for free recycling oh that would be awesome What's okay. our last vote in the council vote to uh, complete the year contract? To eliminate because we were trying to cut the budget. Yeah, I mean, we're I, trying to cut. I thought we were completing the year vote by the council. Before um, we I thought. No, you all voted. Yeah, to, it was voted to do away with them. You know. Yeah. But I, I thought it was to complete the contract we had going. So it, I believe it was just to go ahead and end it. I could be wrong, but I believe, and that's why they picked him up. To end it? Yeah, it was the end of the quarter. It was the end of the quarter, and then they were anxious, and they came and picked them up, like, the following Friday or something. Yeah. But we may be able to get them back next year for free. Well, I hope they include plastics, you know. That's that the, would be nice. Yeah. It may. But you know, if everybody, let's say 90% of this community used those cans, they'd be filled up probably in a week time. Right. I, I estimate about 10% of, of the community is using them because they'd be filled up in a month's time. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Um, we actually, I took a poll when we were talking about removing them. I actually, I think I actually voted against removing them. Um, yeah, I, I voted against removing them, and I kind of took a poll of the um, community members, and about a third, I mean, we didn't have a ton of, of people here that day, but about a third of the people in the audience raised their hand that they use them, and I know I use them, Bob uses them, um, you know, so, you know, I think it's, a part, it's an important thing that, you know, we can do. Well, during World War II, my mother, my mother was in charge of a all the, the scrap, you know, accumulation in our community, you know, uh, so that's how they raise. Okay. okay. We'll do our best to give them back. Anything else? Yeah. Not this community, okay. community in California. <laughs> Office report. Oh, DA Solano guest. Um, he's not going to be here today. What was his subject for talking? Uh, probably meetings. Meetings. Conduct during the meetings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's okay. I think she's looking for that last check. Uh, oh. Is Oh, just a turkey. Is he on there waiting yeah. for us? Here he is. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. I'm uh, sorry, I couldn't be there in person, but I had a medical appointment that I have to take care of. Can't hear you. Okay. Can, can, you speak, hear can you speak up a little bit, sir? Yeah. I said I apologize that I couldn't see you at the meetings. I had a uh, specialist medical appointment. I had to uh, release and pay. 
Any other day of the day. Um, I plan on being at the next meeting to give an overview as to um, some of the procedures that uh, we can work that with uh, the sheriff's department and uh, with the mayor. Uh, can you hear me better now? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Are you able to hear? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So I plan on being at the next meeting and I will go over the uh, procedures and protocols that have been discussed with uh, the sheriff's department and uh, the mayor is briefed on those. They are the procedures that go with the uh, state statutes that um, govern how meetings should not be disrupted and um, the progressive way that the people will be treated if they're not complying with the chair's recognition and procedure. I'll be there in person at the next meeting. Thank you, DA Solano. Is there anything else, sir? No. Okay. I'll All right. everything else when I uh, appear next time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> we'll move on to reports, office report. I don't think she has Oh, I was just telling her on her office report, she can um, do the utilities and how much is delinquent total for the town. So if you go to the second page, the last column where it says 133.38 and go straight down, and you're gonna go to $19,407.62 delinquent. That includes gas, water, and sewer. This one. And you go down that one at 19,000. That's the total amount due to the town of Angular that from delinquent accounts. Excuse me? Huh? I was talking to her. But can I ask, since you said excuse me? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Donald. Uh, uh, da -da -da -da. So these are just bills that are owed to us from the uh, uh, resident. From yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, oh, oh, water, gas, water, and sewer. <laughs> <laughs> we have the project report which covers the augmentation fund. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, <laughs> on Ken's report, he made notes that the town received notice from the Division of Water Resource after their inspection of the augmentation reservoir in August. One manhole rim had been displaced and a lot of debris to plug the flow line going through the augmentation station. Augmentation records records the flow of water that the town of Aguilar gets credit for use of their wells. DWR informed Aguilar this needed to be corrected before we could use it. I went and cleared debris and manhole and reset the rim and lid. And Deputy Water Commissioner inspected the work and approved the work on the map. They are waiting for approval from USDA to get the project completed. Hey, thank you. All school under projects. Frank and I have been doing the inventory of the vehicles. As the town owns, and I'll give the list to Angela. Angela. Yeah, we need it actually. James Ray needs it for the audits. He keeps asking about some cop car. Do we own a cop car? Well, we yeah. Own one. We, it's in your three. Yeah. Do we own three cop cars? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that makes absolutely no sense. So, yeah, we need those inventories and we need it. I mean, well, and that's just it. So I don't know. I mean, there's got to be some way to determine, you know, make a determination of value on these things. And if we're not using them, then we need to sell them and generate some funding for the town. I think that's something maybe that we could look at, and that would be, I don't know, auctioning off or. The town vehicles that we're not using to generate some type of income. Well, you gotta get rid of them anyway. Why have some injury? Right. <coughs> we need two for maintenance and one for the marshal if we ever get rid of them. So, what we have in the garage is what's for maintenance? No. So you have the regular truck that was just recently purchased. You have the emergency vehicle. What else is in there? Well, there's two emergency vehicles in there. In there? Yeah, there's a black and a white. They're okay. SUVs. And then you have a new truck and a white truck. That's in there that's leaking oil. Thank you. Don't forget the green one. So we can um, use your list and try to get a volume and try to auction them off or sell them something. One of the things we have to talk about is how we're going to be providing them by vehicles. Because they have never been in the start of it. They've been sitting there for so long. Especially the one in this garage here and the ones out on the yard. Can we sell them as is? Well, I think some of them have equipment in them that I don't think you want to sell. Yeah. You don't want to sell them as is. Like what type of equipment are you talking about? That old oh, the old place cards. The only thing about selling them as as is is you have to sell them to someone certified for law enforcement. So it'd be something to look into. You get more for them like that. Weren't those donated? Or were those? That one big truck up there, that one with the transmission board, that was donated, I think, from a pioneer or somebody. Okay, well, I, I'd say let's. But we need to, yeah, we need to revisit this. We need, we got a lot to get through. We need to, so yeah, we need to try to determine value. If we can sell them without mileage or equipment, figure out the equipment in it, 
you know, whether it's all for scrap metal, I mean, which we just need to figure out what to, there's no reason that we have that many vehicles. So I'd say we table that. Oh, yeah, and of course, the missing tractor. We just couldn't hear it. The missing tractor. Missing tractor and what? What's called? Yeah, bottom of the sewer pond. So, <laughs> my question is, <laughs> was, were those not injured? No. So, I think we could, is it Sursa? We would call. I think we could call Sursa and see if it was insured. And if it was, if we can still file a claim. And if a claim was filed, we want to know where that money went. While we're doing that, and it is project reports, what about the leak over at the community center? We need to file a claim on that to get that repaired. What about the foundation out here in the front? Sorry. The foundation out there, the standing water. So, I mean, there's a there's list of projects. Because there's the one on the front where the um, concrete is falling off. Right. And then right as you walk out the door, last week when it rained, yeah, and after the meeting, water. there was a puddle of water right there, so it was all there. just yeah. forming right there. Yeah, so, um, so I think we need to put that on our, our project report and for <coughs> insurance claims. For those things that you just said, I watched them as they installed the ADA ramp out here, and what happened was this inside wall, it was uh there wasn't a footing put in specifically for that so that wall was set on the existing footing put in what 100 years ago I mean, so these problems can go back to this ada ramp yeah i think you told me about that because if they put that footing on the original structure yeah on the outside they put in a footing and they right. run the stem wall which was correct right but when they came to the building Instead of setting another footing next to it in the stem wall, it worked with that way. They set it directly on the original On footing. the original footing, and which is a hundred years. To carry this extra weight. Yeah. That's why we're having the problems up here, right. in my opinion. So that ramp, if you don't have an automatic wheelchair, isn't it difficult to come up? Yes. Mm -hmm. like I can to be, get up there with my walker. Sorry it's like a lip. And ADA approved. Old. So I, it's too much. I mean, to me, I, to me, it seems like it needs to go back to the contractor, and the contractor I needs to fix it. So right. And I don't contract. know what his insurance is, but it's back, you know, there's better ways to do that than if we can get back to where we are. Guys, just keep it down, please. Um, I'm sorry. Who? I'm sorry. Who? Um, what were you saying about the original contractor? If we go back to him and get the insurance to at least take the thing out, I mean, there, I don't see any other way. You probably want to redo it. Redo it? Is that what you want? Well, I, I would think that it it's only going to cause more problems, problems because we you do extra weight on an original footing that wasn't designed to take the weight. So if it comes out, we have other options in replacing it, but it would depend on the insurance. If they could set us back to where we were at the start, we'd be better off. So are you saying is it better to contract contact the contractor or contact insurance at this point? I would go to the contractor first. Okay. But my understanding is that he didn't submit a plan to be approved. He did or didn't? He did not. <laughs> so it's we'd have to start with him, find out, you know, uh, okay. what well, I think we could get one of the girls maybe to pull up the contract. Is there a contract, Daryl? You know? Should have been. There was a contract. So there should drawings. be specifications, everything. No, on he's just saying that there wasn't. There was no drawing. I tried to get them to give a detailed drawing of it. Last yeah, I mean, there should have been drawing. engineering on it. Yeah, it, it, that, con that part of it never came that I know of. I was off the council before they finalized it, but I've never seen anything, and I have several times. Yeah, that's an issue. He should have provided engineer It should drawings. also have his insurance on there also, right? 
Yeah, I mean, I'm any, anybody, any any vendor, any contractor that we're hiring, hiring, you should be getting their certificate of liability insurance. Okay. <laughs> All right, so. So we'll um, just have them pull up the original paperwork on that ramp and see what we could do. Do we need to make any motions on on this? I mean, because we again we have that list. We need the community center to leak in the roof. We have the ramp. What was the other thing that we had? The vehicles. Standing water. Standing water. We got that. The oh, tractor. Tractor. <coughs> okay, so I make a motion to um, table the tractor and the. What's the house? What's it called? The bush. Uh, the what? Is it a bush or brush? Bush. bush. Some people say brush, some people say bush. It's not on the agenda. We don't have the table. No, okay. We just have to put it on there for the next meeting. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we just, we've got a lot we got to get through. On old business. We're going to go to 202 Grimes Zoning. Yeah. What, what's the issue with 202 Grimes? I don't know. It's going to be commercial or residential. Nobody keep emailing wanting an answer on what the board because it's been a year. Yeah, so no one gave the people board. live on Grimes. Then right, we talked about this. that, and we said because I asked you, and you said no one ever contacted you or any of the or anyone said. else on the, actually the surrounding area. Yeah, because some kind of report needs to be made. They're going to put in a fourplex. It's going to mean possibility eight more vehicles parked in on right. that corner. Number you know, eight it, plus. Eight more vehicles. If you have four apartments, there's a possibility of two cars per apartment. That corner is congested already with the people that are there. True. Okay, so do we need to have a meeting with the citizens? Or don't they get the input? That well, the citizens, the residents okay. around um, that should be notified of the changes. There should to be begin something. With. Can we put that a on a written document that should be or have a rezoning? meeting so that the public can they give come. input okay i was gonna say yeah either a special meeting or could that be part of our workshop it could be part of the workshop we could do it that so way so why don't we just put that well, don't um, you have to take make the petition with the you know, residents of that area see how they sign if they sign to for well, it or can we do the petition at the workshop and people there that live in that but area. They don't attend the meeting. Well, I was thinking you can mail it to the residents around there. Yeah, notice of the zoning so that they're able to make it to the meeting. Okay. So, and if they can't make it to the meeting, then what? Well, there should be contact information up here because they, they should get a diagram of what they're putting there. Okay. You know, to give the people an idea of what you're going to do to our Okay, neighborhood. so if the people that want to put this there, have we got any plans or drawings or anything from them? Yeah, they've turned in plans, but what was supposed to happen, the attorney was supposed to type up paperwork, send to the residents, and then 15 days later, we were supposed to have a public hearing for that. But the attorney resigned before that got done, so we haven't got that part. I believe we have to send the notice out. 15 days later, there has to be a public hearing, and then from there, it goes out to them. Right. It has to be published, right? Yeah, it would have to be published a public hearing. <laughs> okay, so do we need to wait for the attorney again on this then? Right. Okay. All right, so we have the table, and we're going to get to the attorney, the update on the attorney. All right, I motion to table 202 Grimes Zoning. You second it. Can I get roll call, please? Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Brahas? Yes. Ms. Gellman? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? Yes. Oh, yes. the next meeting, because we're going to talk about the attorney. <laughs> Thank you. 
So on the town judge, I all I found was that he was appointed and I tried calling him. I didn't get an answer and I didn't have um, you can't leave a message. Okay, can can't Sursa answer that for us of whether we're required to have a town judge? Well, on? There's some there's something that came up though. There's a, uh, a gentleman that's interested in being the code enforcer. Uh, yes, uh, <coughs> I don't remember his name right away, right off top. Down this year, who is that that wanted to be the code enforcement? Bob Gibson. So we got an opportunity if we can get code enforcement in here, then we would need the judge. And plus, that would help the, the town all together because right now we don't have a way to get somewhere uh, a summons or a citation to clean your places up. And this town going to crash. It's been. So uh, before we release the judge, let's look into this to at least give the man a chance, even if we've done it part time, a few hours a day or a few hours a week. I'm sorry, what was his name? Bob, Bob Gibson. Has he put a, a proposal or any resume or and anything? I'm, I'm supposed to get everyone together on this. He's already been talked to by someone else. And the information is he, uh, I believe it was a police officer. He doesn't want to be the town marshal, but he would be interested in code in enforcement, code. which would help us. Immensely. It would help a lot. It would help with the animal issues. It would help with weed issues. It would help with you know garbage yeah, in people's yeah, yards. So let's see where we go with this before we let the judge go. Now we got an opportunity to use Makes good sense. I think it does. I mean, it's so do you want money. to um, make a motion to retain the judge? I'd like, to, but I'd like to say just wait till after you talk to this. I'd like for you to interview the guy if he gets a job as a code enforcement. Then we'll need the judge. So let's do the interview first, and if he's accepted, then we'll make a decision on. So the should we table the judge again then? Okay, make a motion. I make a motion to table the judge. Second. Pro call. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Brahas. Yes. Ms. Gilman. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Romero. Yes. Mr. Thorne. Yes. Why are calling? I know that we've had um, numerous discussions on this. But didn't we say every time we need the attorney to make the final decision? Yeah. We did. Yeah. And the water hauling, that was going to be settled by the Mauricio well. Have we lost our right to that water yet? The notice I heard of was a couple of months ago. We had 30 days to do something. Have we done anything? I talked to them at the state. It's not that we had 30 days. As long as we keep sending in the meter read while it's down, we have enough time. After a year, then they would check back into it. But all we have to do is get see if we can get someone down here to finish repairing what needed to be repaired and we could get it going again. Okay, and the last conversation I heard about it because Mauricio Well supplies a lot of water here. And if we lose that, we're going to have to go back to court to try to get it. So this should be put on one of the importance list of, we can't lose that well. It'll hurt the town if we do. And the last thing I heard from this council is we're close to being finished with it. And then we stop. So... Back. We only stopped because we didn't have the money actually to finish the repair, right? Uh, that was what was said, but there was well, uh, two, there was two contractors that what? came in that were willing to work the deal. Yeah, there were two contractors willing to come in and work out a payment thing to get it running, and I don't think it went any support from there. When when was that? So I swear I must what? be like losing my mind. I don't remember. Was that before me or no? No, you were here. It, it when was. we talked about it, Bernie, mm -hmm. and then we said about the meeting with <coughs> the state, 
the what is it, the Department of Water? With we them, with because the then they, that is when they told us that we were over on our water usage. And when we're over on the water issue, go ahead, Daryl. Well, she just said that, that we could we cannot bring the Marisha well on the line until we get some of our issues cleared up. What is really wrong with my issue? What's up with the height? The pipe isn't long the enough. Pipe is not long enough to get to reach the water. The water cable problem. Possibly. Possibly. Well, yeah. Well, the water went down. And as as it, have they checked to see if it came up. I don't know. I don't, I don't think you know nobody's belly. No, really. Wow, well, that's it. Everything that needs to be done. We have wait. We have everything to fix it. We just don't have the money to fix it. They've already done no, the no, it's in it's where, hard. you know, some of the vendors that the town has worked with in the past, you know, are they were everybody's waiting on money. The vendor that was working on it uh, was told that we didn't have the money to pay him and he backed off. But then he also said he's willing to make payment arrangements and we need to let him. No, it, at least offer us the arrangements because if we lose that well, it would hurt the town. Who who was that again? It's willing to make this payment. Is that Andrietta? Andrietta drilling. Yeah, we should talk to them and see what Andrietta drilling out of Walsenburg. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we get the information of what it's going to cost and what we would have to pay on the payments, because whatever that is. Will be a lot cheaper than if we have to go in and start over with the water to get the Okay, sir, wrong. can you contact him? She's going to. And then find out what he's willing to take in payments because, you know, we could slide him in, you know. Let us the, know what the amount is. Right. It have, was right. At 80, like $8,700. Is that all? Yeah, but when we don't have it, that's, that's a loss. But it's a lot of people have it. Now, if we can collect, you know, what we have on um, delinquent from, from the town, the yeah, from the town. So, uh, his name is Craig. But if, if we don't know the answer of how much oh, yeah. it'll cost, yeah. we don't know where to start working to fix it. Yeah. Well, eight eighty-seven hundred. That's the number. Well, that's, that's the first time I heard that that's, number. Right? It was like eighty-seven hundred dollars. I never saw a number. I don't know where a number came up from. Uh, well, visit with him, Sarah. Yeah, yeah just yeah. Find saying. out those numbers and bring them to the next meeting and put it on. You know. Okay. So again, water hauling, and then. Okay. Well, no. Okay. We have an issue. He will say something. Go ahead. What is the matter with the gallery? With what? The gallery. I. It's right next to the Marisa Well thing. I know there's a gallery associated with the well, and I, but I don't quite understand exactly how the gallery works. Derek, could you help us out? The gallery was took offline in God 2013 ish, somewhere around in there. The state took it offline because we weren't able to coordinate it. The only reason they used to use it is because there's a pump in there. It would pump it back to the Mauricio well house through a bag filtration system, chlorinate it, and then put it back into the system that way. But all that got, that was out when I showed up. It was, it was physically in there, but it wasn't connected anymore. I guess it was antiquated or whatnot. So the state made us go down there and seal that galley off. So it's basically a source of, right? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, a gigantic concrete tube right there on that sharp bend before the calendar. Uh -huh. Water would just, it's, it's like a well, water would filter into it. There's an overflow and then there is a, I think it's like an eight or 10 inch pipe leading out and it would just reflow gravity down to, down, to, down to town. But without a chlorination source to it, we weren't able to use it. <laughs> And you had something else? They're out of water. Who's out of water? The people they've been calling to. Oh, yeah. Um, and 
whoever delivers it will not deliver water until they're paid in full. And we approved last meeting, didn't we approve payments to them? They want to be paid in full. What's your What's the balance? That's sorry, Angela. That's what I added on there on the three ninety two white things. You approved three oh one, and then I did the yield three ninety two more that day. It was now. like six hundred dollars. Okay, so six ninety three. Okay, yes. so we were just kind of talking before we started, um, and we'll get to this. We'll get an approval for the board to. Um, this is, comes down into the, the approval of bills to pay. Um, we kind of just looked at it where we could reduce uh, some of the bills to get this paid. So we'll bring that when it comes up for the bill paid for the okay. board to approve the ones that we want to adjust to get this paid for the water hauling. So then does the board agree to keep water hauling till we have to. The augmentation pond. It was an agreement that was made before. Well, it's a Mauricio well that supplied water to him, so the augmentation pond wouldn't have nothing to do with it. When that's complete, we'll have water to use. Will we will we be able to turn the that well back on? Once the pond is finished and the Mauricio and in the um I don't know. Court I, order I, I, is lifted. I need. I would need to read read the documentation that Rachel gave us that day. Okay. I don't know what how it read when we could turn it back on. Okay. So then does the board agree to keep the <coughs> water hauling so we can get the water situation? Yeah, I make a motion to continue water hauling. Second. Roll call. Mayor Pro Tem. No. Ms. Adams. Yes. Mr. Bro Brojas. Yes. Ms. Gelman? Yes. Mr. Romero? No. Mr. Thorne? Are we under legal obligation to haul it? Yes, from what I understand. What, right. All the times you talk right. about it. I'm assuming, Vernon, because it was uh, something that was previously, and, and it should have come to the boards, but it didn't. It was just something that was done. But the thing was, that didn't they pay for a water tap? And so they're not getting the water. So the water can't. cap's been there, right? I mean, correct. They just they bought they purchased the property and it was already there. I I stand with my answer. I, I just as far as the previous discussions we had, we're legally bound, and again, until we get this attorney to deal with some of this stuff, right. we have to keep some stuff status quo. Unfortunately. All right. So my vote would be yes. Motion passed. Okay, the attorney. I need to set up. I don't know. Do you want him to come in person or whatever we can do the quickest to get him on retainage? You know, let's get him interviewed. Which one? Do Zoom in person, whatever's going to be quickest. Okay, and well, three, three were recommended, and I only seen one in the packet. Was there a reason for that? I didn't get any other uh, recommendations. The ones that you had talked about, mm -hmm. they didn't, the ones with Peter? Yeah. They didn't take it. Now, this is a Peter recommendation, and that's the only one that answered. Okay, so, all right. Yeah, the other one, there was a lady and then another gentleman. Yeah, he said no. Denver. Yes. So we'll agree to a Zoom meeting and what's going to work for everybody. We didn't schedule in for tonight. An evening? No. 
He can't do a meeting. Oh, I mean, yeah, he can do an evening meeting, but I thought you said for tonight. No, I mean, why didn't we schedule it for tonight? Because he just got, I messaged him, and then I hadn't heard from him. I messaged him again, and then I heard from him, and he said yes, because when we get him, we get him and his son. We're going to have both. Both what? Both attorneys. Yeah, we just, I mean, I did Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, whatever night it be. Is it after, what's going to work for you after 5 o'clock? Any kind of, okay. like 5.30, one of those nights? I will message him tonight when I get home. Okay, do we have to do that in a public forum or do a special meet executive session? What do we do on that? In a public, okay, so a special meeting, just, I mean, we just need to make it quick because we're going to be doing yet another special meeting right. after workshops in like two weeks. So I think a special meeting for just, yeah, see what he has Monday night, Tuesday night okay, for 530. I think, does that work for everybody? Yeah. Next two, next Monday? Monday or Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> I will ask him if I get an answer. Well, even Tuesday. Maybe, yeah, maybe Tuesday. Just to get it safe. Yeah. Tuesday night. Yeah. Okay. So then we're just going to go ahead and set the meeting for him. Well, I mean, we. Obviously, we need to check with him tomorrow that Tuesday night works for him via Zoom. Okay. Yeah, Tuesday night. So then we will table the attorney again? Oh, yeah. should just table the attorney until uh, Tuesday night, as long as he's available, I guess. We're going to table it. Well, we have the Legion meeting that evening. Oh. Yeah. Every first Why don't we just cancel the American Legion meeting? This is really important. I mean, I know that I'm not saying he asked the Legion to cancel, cancel the meeting. Yeah, I, I guess we'd have to if that's what you want to do. Cancel last time. We're we'll talking about American Legion meeting. We could do ours on Wednesday. We, we could work yeah, it out later. Yeah, we could work it out later. Okay, uh -huh. thank you guys. This, this is like yes, really important. I was hoping we'd have him hired by tonight, you know. We, we could put off the meeting, though. I'm sure the guys would understand. Okay. So, 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 so I motioned and you seconded, right? Yeah. Yeah. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Brahas? Yes. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? Yes. Mercantile liquor license. I motion to renew his license. Second. Oh, their license. Roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Ms. Adams. Stay. Mr. Brahas. Yes. Ms. Gelman. Yes. Mr. Romero. Yes. Mr. Thorne. Yes. Motion passed. I can find the ones. <clears throat> On the ORC operator, I have a letter from Marty. You have it? Did you say Marty? Marty Coca. Anthony. Or Anthony. Anthony Marty Coca. Okay. Sorry. Right there. See here. No. Right oh, we see right there. I didn't see him come in. Sorry. That was okay. Go ahead. Step up, Anthony. Oh my. How are you doing? Hey, how are you? Good. Anthony, I read this and it's, uh, what you're asking for is to be a salaried town employee 
and uh, you're wanting a monthly payment? Yes. See, I was going to, I had talked about hourly and then like a contract thing. I listened to the Zoom thing. So oh, okay. My question would be, isn't that still like a contractor or no? <coughs> because you well, guys just have it, it just depends because it could go both ways. I mean, if, if he's salaried for the hours that he works, but then charging, I, I guess I was still really confused because you were still talking about charging licensing, water license fee on top of your hourly rate. Um, and I'm not trying to slow you down. No. The job part. My, my question would be if you're a contractor, that I would like to see the contractor because when Stephanie was interviewing you, she brought up a lot of things that I didn't know about, and I don't think anyone else did, of what your actual job duties would be. And I've seen here that if, if it's not, if you're a contractor, there should be a written contract that works for both of us to where the your job duties are explained and everyone knows what you're going to be doing. If you're a salary employee, then we have to make changes to the employee handbook to cover yeah. what your duties would be. And I understand that because the company I work for part time, I talked to him. I called him the next day after last meeting. He goes, I don't care if you're a city employee. He goes, if you work part time, whatever you do, he goes, but you're not going to contract because you work for me because you're going to be way cheaper than I am. Well, he, he know yeah, and then he and then he told me he goes. I go. Well, do you want to do it? Like I had the town of Starkville under my own. He got mad, and I have it under him, and I make less. And then he goes. He goes. I don't want nothing to do with Aguilar. That was his answer. Kind of like you know he's done that before, and you have water license on the fresh water and waste water. Yes. Have you gave them a copy of it? Yes, they have. Also, we had a meeting with Colorado Public Health and Environment, and we have until 10 4 to have an OR operator, or we will be in violation. And, and that's important. I'm not trying to slow down the license. No, no, I'm just, I just letting you make, know. I just because... want to make sure that everyone's clear on what his duties are. And it's either by contract that he signs with the town, or it's by an addition to the employee. Right, and that's that. what it was saying is he can't do contract. It would have to be employee. So I think we'd have to make those changes or whatever, you know, to the employee handbook to accommodate. Right. That because he can't do contract with his current contract. Right. And I agree to it then. If it's going to be an employee, then we need to make a change to the employee handbook that lists his work details. <coughs> and that's to cover the town, too. You know, the only thing you have to do with the, the employee handbook is do a job description. That's it. Yeah. Because yeah, it I mean, already covers salary employees. Yeah, I mean, really, handbooks don't typically have job descriptions in there. <laughs> the handbooks are more of a broad scope, and then there's usually separate job descriptions for each position within the town. So you're saying we should hire him without a written thing of... No, I'm saying part. that we should hire him and write up a job description for him. After the fact that we hire him. I mean, how long would it take to write it up and get it approved? I know we need to. I, I right. know we need to. Right. Okay. But um, we, we can't jump ahead of some kind of description of what he's going to be doing for us for this one. Well, can we get that done tomorrow and, and and just slide that in with the meeting with the attorney Tuesday night? Can, can, that'll work. That'll work. Can, can one of you guys work with? And I'm not sir? trying to slow you. No, I know. I understand that. Yeah. I mean, so. it kind of. I was kind of upset because it's like you know, he's told me before on some of the other stuff I have, like Cokedale. He goes, "Oh, you had that before you, but you better not take nothing new because that's my money." Yeah. Well, but yet he says he goes, "I don't want nothing." But to he doesn't want anything to do with it. So no. It's like, and he know, done he that is, with. He's holding you to a non compete. Okay, telling you, you yeah. can compete with him, but then he won't take the job either. 
Well, he done that with the Best Western. He goes, I'm going to deal with uh, the Patels. I go, I don't so blame you. Know, you. That non competes are really coming under fire under federal law. Oh, I know. So you might want to educate yourself on that, you know, for further. Work. Yeah, because I had to file, I had to write, fill out a paper, <laughs> which I never did, and he caught it where he had a lot of these guys that left him go and they do contracts. Like one guy's doing Colorado City, and he goes, You can't do a contract for two years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you need to. Uh, so I don't know what's going to go on because yeah. I know in a year. He sold out for four point two million to an outfit out of Florida. So right, I don't know so what. I, I think we need to get him on as employee. Then, yeah. Did you say there's something in the handbook that states there was a salary position? The salary uh, section in the employee. So right. It's just a job, a job description, right? So it's like right now for one of my clients, we're writing up standard operating procedures, employee handbooks, but on top of that, we're writing up specific job descriptions for that position. So that's what we could do, and that's a part of his employee package. He signs off on it. Here's the job description. But wait until we do the attorneys, they wouldn't interfere with you on your time. No, because like, like I said, even if I, if something goes wrong, I have to come up here more like Cokedale last month. I was going more and I was teasing them. I'm like, gee, I'm not making no money. I've come up here like four or five times. I just, you know, just teasing <coughs> Kathy because I was set on a set thing there. But. Whenever I went through the proposal that you made, it really didn't say what was expected of you. So yeah. Job description, right. then the counts could Yeah, because I know, like they said last time, that I couldn't believe Luke was charging you guys to bring you bottles. Yeah. That was it. I mean, that's something that I, I laughed about. That. I even talked to Wayne. I go, man, that's a good thing. <laughs> he goes, I never thought of that either. You know, I mean, I couldn't believe that charging you to bring a bottle when you could have got him. Okay, so I make a motion so. to uh, get that job description written up. Get it voted on Tuesday night during a special meeting. Can I get a second? Second. Roll call. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Brahas? Yes. Ms. Gelna? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thornton? Yes. Okay. Okay, thanks. I'll let you know on Tuesday for Tuesday, okay. okay? Thank you. Welcome. New business, liquor license, roughness. Motion to Second. Is that place even open? I guess yes. I've never been in there. You have to go there for Sundays. Just one day a week. You can Eat and drink on a Sunday. After church. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get roll call, please? Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Brohas? Yes. Ms. Gilnett? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thornton? Yes. Motion passed. See that? Building. Yeah, we have a discussion about that. Gerald, <coughs> I didn't hear your question. If you recall that we had a discussion about that. Yes, yeah, we approved it. We approved it for several of that. I wasn't here, so. Well, this gives us two options, so the last one didn't, so. Oh, I like So what do we have here? Here's option one and option two on it. Did they submit this? Yes. Looks like you're waiting for us to choose before it goes to a realtor. Thank you. 
we we'll get a ten thousand dollar credit, and uh, we're going to have still have to come up with twenty five thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. That's option two. Did one. You, oh, that was option one. Wow. So would we get a mortgage on it, or what? Because I don't, I don't believe we have twenty five thousand. I think option two would be the better of the two. I didn't hear you, Bob. I think option two would be better of the two. So, so they they didn't pay the six thousand dollars for their water tap down there. So we got a credit towards it for ten thousand dollars, two hundred ten thousand two hundred fifty dollars. Why is the city thinking of buying that property? Yeah, why are we acquiring this when building? We have that other property that we can't even take care of. Yeah, the swimming or the swimming pool was at. We have an acre there. We don't have a building. Or what does it cost there? We could build one. This is this is an old building now with the buying. You're not buying it. Yeah, who proposed to buy this building to begin with? I thought it was an exchange so, for something before. Stephanie, go ahead. Yeah, so basically, I guess back in before 2019, Tyra was working with somebody from CDOT to get the building. When I spoke with the new lady and the lady, me and her were under the impression that basically for the monthly water bills, we could take the building and just give them credit every month for their bill. Well, now that lady's gone and Tyra's gone. So between me and the other lady, what she said is they want to work with the town to get the property. I don't know why the town was trying to get it, but um, I reached out to the lady to see what was going on because I have this outstanding $10,000 account, you know. And she basically said that the town wanted to get the building. So basically, um, back in when Tyra started this, it appraised at $32,000. And I guess at that time they were willing just to take uh, their credits for the water tap and any water bills. Well, now the new lady said what well, they still want to work with the town. So if we would like to go ahead and take that over as a lease, we would pay a monthly rent and then that monthly rent would go towards the purchase price. And we would also be able to take whatever water usage every month and um, credit their account, but that amount of money would also go towards the purchase price on this. But we don't know why we were trying to get this no. building. It makes no sense to me to get this building. At this yeah, point. and she basically said that the appraisal now came in at thirty-six thousand was the low end. So she said the low end, thirty-two thousand, thirty-six thousand was the low end. Yeah, I, so we're kind of, I think, all in agreement here. We don't want the building. We yeah. want them to pay their bill. Okay, so I think now we need. We could use the money more. Uh, but yeah, because <laughs> I'm not even sure what the intention for that building was. Right. So I mean, right now, I can't even see any use for it, and I think that we could use the money. Okay. Here's an option two for us. Rent it? No, well, the building there is closer to the maintenance department. All that mess on the corner could be moved over there and possibly sell the one over there and have our property closer. It's better property, it's fenced better, and there is the building. And isn't there a lift in there for uh, vehicles? There's not a lift. There's not. Hey, to me, yeah, what if we put our equipment Make that out, the yard. Forward. Yeah, but we'd have to put in slats or something to block the view of it. But it, it appears to be a better situated maintenance or storage area for the town than the one on the corner. But if we sold that to offset. But we could maybe get it um somebody Get an appraisal on it and see which is going to be the better deal then i don't know unless you know like you said let's get rid of it yeah because there's more there's more land there that's not took care of the fence the gates tore up i mean it's not maintained at all so it to me the the, build, the area you're talking about picking up wouldn't be a bad deal for the town 
but to have the two lots would I mean, you'd probably sell that other one for more than this one so you may come out with a little bit of money ahead and I guess in the 2019, the appraisal was only 32,000. Well, she said now it's 36,000. It's gone up, and this is the low end of the appraisal. She said they went the very lowest for the town. So I just need to know if I need to collect the bill from them, or and also I mean, um, she said what she could do is they already had I guess a lease. She said they would have to go have another appraisal <coughs> to see what the lease amount would be. Yeah, hey, that's up to my next question. What do they and want that, a monthly She said that would take weeks. roughly three months to get done, but she said based on the numbers from back in 2019, when I, I don't know what happened. Apparently, all the paperwork had been done. Nobody ever just signed the contract, I guess. But she said she could um, research the numbers based on what it was with the $32,000 and kind of give us an estimate of what a monthly lease would look like. And then in two or three months, once they got the lease appraisal, then we get the actual numbers. But she said it would be probably fairly similar. So and the town should be setting an example for these yards. That's an eyesore. I the maintenance yard that we have right now is uh, disgusting. It's an insult to the town. If no one's taking care of it. Fences falling apart, and we could get control of the way that it looks here, which we desperately need to do. Agreed. No argument here because it's true. It well, actually, the whole town is starting to look like that. Well, we're the example, though. I mean, My yard it, it, that's one what of we do. Content. If we're the example, and this is the kind of thing that we put out for the residents here. Hard to say anything to them whenever we're worse than what they're, they're doing. Well, and I know you're just kind of getting started. I mean, is there any extra time that you have at all at this point? Maybe you just start doing a little bit of cleanup over there? Honestly, with my hours, uh -huh. I don't know. You don't know yet. Just gonna be honest. Yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, I know twenty hours, and I know you got a big chore list, and yeah. you got to read meters. I'm just, I'm just like I said, I'm throwing out there. Even if you had an hour a week or something to just go over there and start picking away at it. I mean, I can, mm -hmm. but again, you right. know, that's it's only gonna be an hour, right. half hour, hour. Right. It just depends on when I'm done with the chores. Right. Well, even well, cleaning up what you need over there is a fence to block the view of it. Right. So or you know, apart. you know, I'm he's willing to donate some time. I don't. I mean, it's not like I could lift you know 100 pounds or anything. But you know, maybe we do some donation time to pitch in. Yeah. And well, even if you go with like the lease on here, to talk to them, make arrangements, mm -hmm. let them know that maybe if we could afford the lease payment for two or three months or however long it would take to sell that. Right. At least we could get numbers together and see how the town will come out. Yeah because there's so much work to do on the lot that we have, right. it, it may be work out cheaper for us to make a trade like that, sell that, when it possibly okay. come out with more money. Okay. There's more land. There. So how much, how long did she say to get those lease numbers? Um, I can see if I can have something for, I don't think you want to do anything next week, so the next for morning. For Tuesday, you're, you wanted to tell us, right? <laughs> Not Thursday, please, but um, she just basically said she'll get something as soon as possible, so okay. I can okay. get it. And if you okay. want me to email it okay. as soon as I get so it, so it's not press, I mean, this isn't like pressing and they want an answer like right no, this so moment. She okay. just said to let her know which way you guys decided, and okay. she can send you the uh, estimated piece. Okay. All right, yeah, so we'll get those to a realtor and maybe get a price on an estimate on putting that on the market. Should we just just carry do commercial? Yep. Carry do. Okay. I just saw her yesterday or day before yesterday. Um, so let's maybe if you want to reach out to Carrie, Sarah, or Stephanie. Appraisal on the yard that we have now. To, well, to you know, what? I mean, just kind of see what you know, because she can probably pull comps on it. You know. Okay. Um, And see what we'd be looking and at. And see what we'd be we kind of looking it. at if we went to sell it. And, you know, I mean, if, then when if we did go to sell it, you know, an appraisal might actually need to be done. But if, 
you know, I mean, she, again, let's support the people that live and work in our community. Let's give her the business, give her the chance, you know, right. right. Pull some comps and then if we sell it, use her as the agent, you know, that's what I propose. Um, so should we just make a motion to table this until we get the lease and talk to Carrie? Well, when we make a motion to uh, uh, talk to Carrie and work on, on okay. this. All right, so make a motion to get the lease numbers and talk to Carrie. Second. So you make the motion, Angela? Yeah, and then for second. second. Yeah. Roll call. Real person? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Brahas? No. Ms. Gilman? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? Yes. Motion passed the table. Affleck. um yeah unfortunately you know this needs to go the wayside is the other um insurance. insurance that the town was providing um for the employees you know this is seven hundred dollars a month that we desperately need right now um again maybe after the new year after like the augmentation pond is done and the funding we we're starting to get our funding we can, um, you know, talk about some of these things or raises in, in lieu of these benefits. But unfortunately, for the moment, I think we're going to have to, you know, cancel these. We just can't afford it right now. Well, we currently have one employee on it, correct? Right. Right. That's they're getting seven hundred dollars in I mean, I policies. Mean, sorry, not over speed, but I mean, and Sarah can't have health insurance mm -hmm. that I don't want to keep the app left. Okay. And I apologize, I didn't bring that up. We've had that forever. Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize we had it until I got into the bank and saw it was mm -hmm. coming out, and okay. I got in there. But yeah, I mean, it's not fair for me to keep app flack if you right. don't health right. insurance. So I'm good with it. Okay, so I make a motion okay. to cancel the app flack policy. Can I get a second? Thank you. A roll call. Mayor Pro Tem. Yes. Miss Adams. Yes. Mr. Brahas. Yes. Miss Gilna. Yes. Mr. Romero. Yes. Mr. Thornton. Sarah, what's your thought on the thing? You're the ones insured that we're going to cancel. No, it's oh, Stephanie. Stephanie's on the app AFLAC doesn't really provide um, like health insurance per se. What they it's provide is it's like disability insurance. Uh, <coughs> they offer cancer policy insurance. Like if you get cancer and you've had this policy for so long, as soon as you get that diagnosis, you get a payout of however much to help you with your co-pays and uh, deductibles and things like that. Stephanie, you're the one that's covered. Yes, there were two, two we offered her a job with insurance. How do you feel about it? I'm sorry, what was that? How do you feel about this vote? I mean, I think if Sarah doesn't get the regular health insurance, <coughs> it's not fair for me to keep the AFLAC. And the only reason I had the AFLAC was because I wasn't getting the town's insurance, medical insurance. So I was told I could get the AFLAC because I wasn't using medical. And that was. I, I don't know, we've had it forever. I even forgot I had it until, like I said, I saw it come out of the account and checked, and there were just um, two of us at the time, and then I think one of the recent employees just had gotten on that, so. Then you're okay with it being canceled? Yeah, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do we get Burns' book? I thought we should do yes. Oh, wait, yes. Okay.
approval of the bills. Okay, so Monica and I went through this time and, you know, we kind of did the same thing. Um, we tried to pay a little bit more, and, but still leave that $5,000 cushion. However, with that water hauling coming up and a couple other little things, uh, CECOM is ready to disconnect if they don't get payment by the first. Um, and then there's a state... Uh, tax withholding from payroll for 136 so i mean we're looking at oh another eight nine a little over a thousand dollars so what we're proposing what stephanie and i just proposed because robert half the, the, the bane of my existence right now emailing and calling me every day um, and I just I flat out told them, you know, we didn't get a single deliverable from you people, and yet we were paying you five thousand dollars a week. Right. Um, so we had said we were going; it's on here to approve to pay them a thousand dollars, but we proposed actually cutting that back to a five hundred dollar payment to help cover these additional last minute bills that need to get added on. Um, what and, and to keep a five thousand dollar cushion in the account so we talked about reducing robert and <coughs> to five hundred and what was the other one we said stephanie um, great american financial it's the front page so instead of 931.55 it's towards the bottom great american financial what are they again i'm sorry uh, so it's the um, lease for the copy machine and the post -it. okay so yeah reducing there to 447.61 and that would cover yeah, um, at least one month. Right, so we'd pay them one month instead of paying them in full, and then that would cover the difference of these last minute bills that we needed to add on, and then still keep a five thousand dollar cushion in the account. <coughs> Robert Cap has wanted us to make some kind of ridiculous um, payment to him. Um, and I told Angela, we can't. Well, there's, there's wanting us to enter into this payment agreement. And I'm like, you've already got the contract. We've already agreed to pay you. And they're like, well, we can't go into quarter four with this outstanding balance. And I said, well, we can't go in to go into quarter four and pay you this balance. I told her. I said, so you know, we can give you, I, I've told you and I've emailed you. I'm not signing anything else. That every two weeks we're gonna get you a little something, probably anywhere from five hundred to fifteen hundred. That's what we can do. If you need to file and sue us, do it because there's nothing else that we can do at this point. We so. didn't get anything, no audits sure. from them. You know, I, Jim Ray has given us more, and we're paying him less. But I mean, when you spend that kind of money and nothing to show for it, yeah, nothing to show for it, and we still, yeah, I mean, we and we that's just remember that's on top of the ninety thousand dollars that we've already paid them, and so I mean, that more than anything in this whole situation makes me really angry. Um, you know that this contract was entered into; it never should have happened, and if the person that did it should have been on top of it and gotten them everything they needed within like no longer than a month, month and a half. But here we are, you know, nine months later, um, you know, but again, we stopped that what, in June, end of June, beginning of July. So anyway, I think so, we're yeah. just going to do what we can, like Thank leave you. it at that. Yep. I don't have a copy of, uh, the bills that you're talking about? Was there a separate form of basic? There, do you want my copy? I know, I know what we paid. Okay, what we're going to pay. He has it. Oh, you do? Okay. He's the last one that Robert Cass that we were just talking about. Yeah. 
this anthem blue cross blue shield that's another we we have we have to pay that that's in arrears okay um we didn't agree to cancel the insurance till was it two meetings ago right and that's an arrears payment from july june, june, no july june or july and so we have to pay that as um sarah has outstanding claims and we didn't count agree to cancel it till last month so we have to cover um for june and, but that'll be the last payment to anthem where are all these four checks Tell me that you with it those are um they they have this weird system going for refunds to um uh yeah deposits so from citizens this is their deposits left over or against the balance of their bills when they leave town or moved out of town you guys they explained it to me how <laughs> you do this how you credit it it's like Basically, um, they have their deposit when they move or whatever. I normally just take the final bill out of their deposit and we write the check to the town and apply it to their account. And then there's another check um, that goes to the customer. And that's right. how. Yeah, it, it's a really that. backwards way. And we've talked about this too going forward. Um, we need to actually set up like a trust account uh, or. You know the customers deposits need to go into that separate trust account and when they make a deposit it goes in there and when they leave and shut off and then they get refunded out of there but right now there's deposits you know people that have been here forever that aren't even in the system because that's how old <laughs> those deposits are so it's on one of our things to do and this fix this backwards way that they're taking care of it. So that's basically to pay, those are to pay off the, um, the person's bill. Okay, so Stephanie issues the refund amount owed to them based upon their final bill. And then so she has to cut these checks to then apply to their final bill to zero it out and close it out is the way I understand it. So aren't we required to hold deposits in a separate account? It, yes. yes. They weren't doing it. They weren't doing it. I found that out the last time when Angela and I met. There was an issue with a former customer. And then so I had Tell them that they couldn't be doing that. It should be, and and that's a part of the new accounting that's going to be done. It'll have its own fund. So a new bank account will also be set up, for right? That. And well, so we'll start yeah. as we start getting a little bit more money. The ones that we do have on file, we'll start moving that money in there, and then. You know, if somebody that, you know, has been a citizen, you know, longer than this system we have on file, we'll just have to deal with that as it comes, like if they pass away or move or something, you know. This report, uh, it's good to know what we owe and who we owe it to, but there's nothing on here and nothing I've ever seen working with the town that actually tells us how much money the town has. Okay, the, the town. Deposits. Well, then that's what we ask every time when we come in the financial committee. When we come in, it's like, okay, what's your balance? So right now, where's those little stickies you gave me? Okay, so in the bank right now, there's forty thousand five hundred and sixty-seven dollars and ten cents. Okay, so couldn't we put something on here that shows the deposits we made and like and from where it's from, a water fund, gas fund? So that the council knows where the money's coming from. I think yeah, I think we can in the future when we start building out these books, but I don't think the current system can so do that, can it? Going forward on the new budget that um Dola or the Tyre Marshall and I will start working on, that we're gonna have a revenue manual, which is gonna be good for uh, the council because Money that comes in is going to put, be put on there, 
and money that goes out from that fund is going to be on there so the town is going to be able to keep track of all monies where did the forty thousand come from that's a combination of utility billing uh and then we got we got a, a little bit of money from, from the state from dola or oh. severance tax severance what did we get tax. from dola or was that from dola ten thousand dollars what's the name I don't know. I believe it was. <clears throat> then we got the money we did receive from San Isabel, some money, and that what had already been paid. So that actually went to the town because they had already paid that bill. David, forty thousand seems, and we paid bills, and we have forty thousand left. No, no, no. This is no forty. No, wish. 40, no. Forty thousand dollars, and now we're going to pay out 30, 36 36 because there's still some previous bills that are haven't cleared yet. So with the previous bills that were paid, there's another four thousand there. So there's forty thousand five hundred sixty-seven, and the total bills going out, including the outstanding past bills that haven't cleared yet, is thirty-six thousand two hundred forty-one dollars. Which will leave us that five thousand dollar cushion. Hopefully, some more of our citizens will pay their bills. Uh, and we're talking about paying the bills, and you know, I, I know this has to be done, and this shows what we owe. But what you're saying about us proving the bills. I don't see anything here that tells us what bills were being asked to approve. These, they're all here. This is everything, and we still have another stack of bills to go through. So this is what Monica and I. Angela. This is what we owe. This is what we owe. Not everything. This is what we decided <coughs> most important, most pressing okay, to pay. These two pages are what yeah. we're going to vote to approve yes. tonight. Yes. Angela and Monica were in here. And they went through the bills and they gave them uh, invoices, everything that pertained to the bills, and that's how they broke it down what they were paying. Okay. So Sursa was super <laughs> important, obviously. Um, we owed them money. Um, we had to get that anthem paid, so Sarah's claims were paid. Um, everything on here, or you know, some of the other things on here are, you know, people that have been beating down the doors and calling and emailing to get paid. Um, there's other ones that, you know, you'll see some $50 or I mean, sorry, $500 payments, you know, um, on some of those, we just, it's like, okay, you know, we owe you $4,000. We can't pay you $4,000. You're getting $500. This is what we can afford to pay you right now. So the whole idea was just to spread it around as much as we can so as many people as possible so get some a little something been paid already. no nothing wrong there no we're paid. waiting for uh, everybody was listening to her yeah. words and she said this was paid so i was wondering well if... no we use the term we did that last time too and so yeah. we stand corrected we did not pay the bills last time i said that we did we didn't all we did was gather the information. We, sorted, we went through invoices and undecided how much to pay everybody. And the only reason I'm asking these questions, it's uh, been messed up for so long that I'm that saying these why. in public now right. so it could be yeah. fixed. Not one of these bills have gone out yet. We're waiting for all of you and all of us to approve them. And that, and, was, that was a question. And the last you. time, none of those bills went out until the board approved it, and then Gerald and I signed the checks, in which I didn't even finish signing my checks at night after the meeting. I came back the next morning and finished my checks so the girls could go home. But they weren't paid until they were approved. Okay. So, yeah, when I say that we go through and choose who's to be paid, it's basically we just gathered the information, looked at it, spread the money around, and decided, okay, these are who we are going to pay with the money that we have, what's most pressing, leaving some money, you know, a little cushion in the account, and then to bring it in front of the board. All right. 
Thank you very much. Can I ask a question? Questions? No, unfortunately, we can't take questions during the meeting. Fire. Bear, can I ask a question? No. We have to stick to the rules. So do we need a motion to approve the bills? We need a motion to approve the bills. <coughs> a motion to approve the bills with the amended amounts of uh, other the two that were just added on? Yeah. Yes. Oasis water for the whole one. I think Frank, you just seconded it. Seconded it, did it, did it. Roll call. Mayor Pro Tem? Yes. Ms. Adams? Yes. Mr. Rojas? Yes. Ms. Gona? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? Yes. Motion passed. Robert Avila? So have you guys gone over all the paperwork and seen the medical papers that were turned in? We have. Have you discussed um, the paper that I brought in that Josh read for me? Um, at the meeting after the 22nd, I think it was 27th. Robert, I can't hear you, man. Oh, sorry. Um, I was asking if um, they were able to look over the paper that Josh read for me about um, uh, about the, yeah, at the, at the one meeting about the meter, about um, returning that, um, getting it turned back on, um, giving me a credit. Have you guys um, looked over that paperwork and discussed it? It's been a month. Everybody has. Yeah, we didn't get a copy of that. He yep. handed it to everybody the last yep. meeting. He did? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, mm -hmm. um, before Josh read it, I handed one to everybody up there. two meetings ago. Yeah. Had another copy of his doctor's letter, um, his request for uh, writing off his balance, and, and there was something else on there. Um, I think well, some. We're to discuss this thing as a group, so okay. individually we have not discussed it. So I know of it. Okay. No. Some of the other paperwork I think I just turned in was a red tag. And um, I turned in paper, a uh, copy of the red tag that they gave me before, right before they pulled the meter. And I gave them a copy of a red tag from a few months before that have that had a seven day um, notice on it. So the red tag that I got was after three o'clock on March the 5th and at 10 a.m. on March the 7th, they came and pulled the meter. They so are. they didn't even give me the three days to come in and make payment plan. I've seen in this that there's a thing, uh, an ordinance that I don't know if you know about, but it says uh, they got the right to pull a meter without notice. So it, uh, I thought we were going to talk to an attorney first on this because. And that's what I wanted ordinance. to have the attorney hired before this all came right in the board um, again. Okay. We're coming close to winter and. I mean, we're discussing this is more confidential, and we're discussing it in the open. And it, or was he supposed to give fifteen day notice before we done this? Or is, he was insisting that he got he wanted on the special meeting last week. Well, two only weeks ago. because he was told he would be on the next agenda. That's what Mayor said. Like, Linda said I would be on the next agenda, so I assumed it was going to be at the special meeting. I didn't think yeah, it would be at the regular meeting because she didn't say the next regular meeting. 
Okay. Well, so that was cleared up um, at that meeting, um, but uh, th that's why I didn't come to the last meeting. Yeah, and that, again, that's why I wanted the attorney because, like I said, I'm hearing you know two sides, and you know hearing from other board members, you know that they feel that there was issues with what happened to you, where. You know, some things might have happened that shouldn't have, but I don't know the legalities of this. And then I see, you know, this big packet from the town and, you know, some other official letters saying that everything went by the book. And that's why I wanted to present all of this in front of the attorney to get, you know, some legal determination on this, um, because I just don't feel like that I am, um, you know, knowledgeable enough. And a lot right. of this it skips around from date to date. It goes back to 2020. When when were you actually put on the account? Um, the at that address, I'm pretty sure it was after 2020, maybe September or October of 2022. Because um, they told me before they could turn the water and gas on at that house, I would have to get permission from the owner, which was who was my aunt that lived in Florida. 2022, all this stuff from 2020 that says that it was delinquent, turned off, delinquent, uh, bill paid, delinquent, turned off. That wasn't him. Those were accounts under um, my aunt's daughter's name, Adina LaCruz. Um, I I, so anything from January 2022 before that was, wasn't even your account? No, uh, and I don't think I turned the gas and the water on until September of um, 2022. It says 10 20 turned on water and gas. But you turned it on for uh, Miss Lapeer? I have them um, all the work orders, and I have that one turned on by Robert Avila. And then on 10 27 20, uh, utility and deposit agreement was made. What page is that on? The first page, right on the cover. So, my name didn't go on that house until January of last year, 2023. January of 2023. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I was paying. So what, what are you looking at? Is that in our packet? You're saying it was him? That's right here, right on the front page. Right. But it just, I mean, I could sit here and say, okay, well, you know, Bird signed this. Where's the actual agreement that he signed? This is the agreements, all the building points. This is for the other house that he Okay, so where's the documentation for 1021 and 102720 that Robert signed utility and deposit agreement. So this is the one for 102720. Who's that? Oh, okay. So see, there's a dispute here. So I, I guess I'm, that's where I'm getting really confused. I mean, I, I do. We want to. I want to get this settled. But you're telling us you didn't put this in your name until beginning of 2023. But I'm right. looking at this document you signed right here from 2020. Right. And the, the only way I was able to get the deed in my name was to pay the tax lien for um, uh, normally it's three years in a row. But because the first payment that I made in September didn't get put in the books until December, they made me pay an extra year. And then the following year, they told me that I still had to pay a fifth year. So I had to actually pay um, five years of the tax lien. And before I paid the five years of tax lien, there was two liens already on the property. And I had to go in and pay those in my cousin's name. So the third lien wouldn't get paid and get sold for the tax lien. And they, um, since I'm a, a direct... Um, uh, relative um, that lives right next door, they were able to send me the tax liens in the mail without um, putting them in the um, the paper first. And I just kept paying them. And one of the tax liens that I paid was a 570 something dollar tax lien that the town had on it for 
the I'm sorry, the twenty dollar maintenance fees or or the okay, last time so they had it turned on. What the liens had to do with the utility bills, and so you're saying that the town had liens on there from past utility bills and yes. past residents or your yes. family members or whatever. Yes. So you're saying that you paid those on behalf of your family, and then that's why you signed this agreement on um, 10 21 20 and 27 20. I think so because um, they didn't turn the, they didn't turn the gas on until I'm sorry. I see the agreement, it's not in this because I don't think the gas was turned on until September of October 22. Okay, hang on. Um, because no, I think I lost it. Where was it? So, this is all paperwork for where Robert lives. Um, but this is where he signed the deposit agreement. Okay, so there's the deposit agreement on 10, 10 And the house he's speaking of for the tax lien is the other property, which he had a tax lien <coughs> under his name. I mean, we can't file it under anybody but who's the owner, and clearly it was him. And this was paid off in 22 when he we worked with him, let him pay it. Well, he told us he was going to go pay it, so we turned on his services in 22 for his other house. And he came in right after and did the deposit agreement on the second house. And then we did receive later that in October, after we took his word and turned the water and everything on, we did get the tax fee. So right now, both of these accounts have outstanding deals. And this is just, I put the pertinent work for you. everything is So we were talking about two different accounts. Two different accounts. And the lead he's talking about is not in the house. But what that's showing me, though, is that he's been behind before, and every time he's paid it off. It's taking him a while. There's tax lien put on it, but eventually he's paid it. Okay. And this shows a record from 2020 until about of constantly being late. But, but, the town's reaction all this time was was to make an agreement with him, which he's obviously and in this paperwork I've been given, he's paid off each time. So to me, in my mind, what kind of was the ordinance does say that we could turn it off and take the meter at any time. I agree to that, but he was given a document saying he had three days to pay. But they came in and took it right away. So you give them a document, give them three days, then you take the meter. It just somewhere doesn't make sense to me. And I got a video that you really need to listen to where the, the lieutenant from the uh, deputies in Trinidad instructed Tyra and uh, Joe Porras that they should have a uh, court order to enter that property. You want me to play it? It's from the policeman yeah. himself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You don't need a court order to enter any property. Yes, you do. The right. town owns and the meter. Town owns the meter. And they have the legal right to go on there and look at the meter. Bullshit. Uh -huh. yeah. Excuse That's me. Legal. You're not, you don't have yeah. the floor. Yes, you do. The only time you need permission is when you go in somebody's house. Okay. Bullshit. Not mm -hmm. No, the, the sheriff I'll deputies, Bob. Bob. The sheriff, de the sheriff deputies won't even come on my property without um, paperwork signed by a judge um, to even walk on the property and talk to me. You're not telling the police. They don't have to be. They're sheriff the deputies. Can't go on your property without no. permission. No, those are state laws that they ha there has to be. I know that there's either, like like I own a piece of property in Alamosa, and my property butts right up next to protected wetlands. And there's actually an easement road, you know, that goes on it that the state or BLM or you know park rangers or whatever are allowed to have access to that. So is it kind of the same when it comes to utilities then? Your ordinance yeah. says your utilities are not supposed to be on our property. Right, sir, we have mind. not given you the floor. Well, we asked you. So um, the, the paperwork- We will not have that again. Thank you. The paperwork I read from the state, I didn't bring copy with me, but the paperwork I read from the state said that the only way that the town employees are allowed on the property are to um, 
um, maintain something that's broken or um, shut the gas and water off um, by the permission of the owner. Like if I was moving or I had them turn it off because I wasn't going to be there for three or four months, um, See, that would be different. This is where I just, I think we need the attorney. I mean, because I'm hearing valid right. points like from all sides and I just, I don't, and, you know, I and don't also know. at one of the meetings over a year and a half ago when we had them at the community center, they stated that those water meters were supposed to be put outside of the property um, more than six years ago. And they didn't, they only put two or three and then they didn't finish it all of them. And that's highlighted in one of the ordinances we have here. Okay, the, they were supposed to be put on the, the outside of the property. Yes, yes, so they wouldn't it's have to go on the properties that's anymore. But the thing for me comes down to, uh, first, we are not lawyers, but there's a two, two minute and seven section piece of a video where the lieutenant from the sheriff's office instructed them, Tyra, Joe Porras, that they needed a warrant to go on that property. And the reason was for that document that he had from the town that gave them uh, uh, three days, I believe it was, mm -hmm. but they came in on the second day. They and didn't give him the full right. process. So if you give him a notice that he's got to do this and he's willing to do that, and if you look back, the town hall was closed the day he came in to pay the bill. Yes, right? so in my day. He had cash, they couldn't do anything over the things. And this is why the, the whole thing before came up to, we should be discussing this with an attorney because I get confused on it too. Right. First, I didn't see the documents that you had there that mm -hmm. she had just showed you, but the documents that you did give us, I got them today. I only had a few hours to go over this, but all these ordinances we have on what you can do and what you cannot do, mm -hmm. I didn't get a copy of that whenever I signed my bill. And this one actually says that uh, you're assuming that he understands these things. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can you assume that someone understands Stands it if they haven't been given it or, or seen it or had access to read it? Do, so do. you want to hold him to rule? I know he should have paid his bills. Everyone should pay their bills, but that's not the main issue here. The issue is the way that he was done, and because of his health and the doctor sending in a statement. To me, my mind says that we have a legal responsibility to do it properly. That's why we were supposed to do this with an attorney. Yeah, right. If we, when we interview the attorney, if he agrees to meet with us on Tuesday, and then if the board decides to hire him, and you agree to just let him take over this and he can read. That would be a good idea because there, um, um, there's also, uh, um, I think it was a federal paperwork that I seen mm -hmm. that when um, somebody that has the medical conditions and gets the medical paperwork into the utility company, they have nine to 12 hours to put the meter back on and turn the gas back on. I they were talking about electricity, though, not anything else. It's a utility. Um, it affected the heat. It doesn't matter if it's electricity, if it's gas, if it's propane, the utility company, um, if the doctor states that by not having that heat, it's going to affect my health and it's affecting my health right now. I still have to take um, uh, inhaler because two weeks after they pulled the meter, I got bronchitis and I ended up in the hospital. They let me go the same day, but um, my lungs are not the same. And one of these things, and I don't know why this happens, because one of the things that we're supposed to review here is 41823. And then I put a note here, it's why does it matter who paid the bill? But you've got the Mike Sexton came in the office to pay Robert's bill. Why would you even do that? Why wouldn't you just say the bill's paid? Why does it matter how his bill gets paid? It shouldn't so matter. And I so why put the name. I just put all the accurate, truthful information, and I do want to make it clear. He she did not his confidential on this paperwork. I see that, but we're discussing it. Mm -hmm. Why would you do? Right. So, so Robert, do you agree to let the attorney handle this? Um, I would agree. Let the attorney handle 
most of it. But um, in the meantime, uh, did you guys um, talk about um, agreeing to any of the terms that I brought well, with the like paperwork? Like said, we can't all talk, you know, without breaking laws, you know, not in a public forum. So this is kind of the time right now to talk right. about this. Right. So you could talk um, about it right now. now. Exactly. Well, were you exactly. given the uh, the option to do this in executive session? Because I wouldn't want this information to discuss. No. And if we're going to talk about it, and we were given the packet, it does say confidential information. Mm -hmm. But to me, on this, you know, and I get this all the time. If it's public information, I got the right to speak about it. But you give me something that says confidential, and then we discuss it in an open meeting that he didn't have the option to go to executive session. Oops. So to me. That confidential means nothing. Everything here is public information right now. Yep. No matter what you stamp it. What about your bill, or What does it look like? Is that public information? It's none of your business. Exactly. Exactly. That's the fucking point, Bob. Right. That's why somebody's name Again, shouldn't have been stated that they paid my again, bill. Would you remove him? He's been asked several times. Yeah. He keeps interrupting the meeting. Mm -hmm. So right now, your wrongs. Do you yep. want to go that route? Possibly. Um, one thing I wanted to ask while I'm up here is um, I got a new red tag this month um, while Dave was working. Um, and it's my understanding that there was up to 30 red tags. How many of those people got their gas or water turned off? Robert, I'm not at liberty to discuss somebody else's bill. I'm not asking and for I their specific bills. I'm asking if they got turned off. But I'm saying I don't know. Can you they ask? Can you ask? Any, to, do, okay, so let's clarify this because, you know, Vern brought up a good point. This is marked confidential. You were right. not given the opportunity for an executive session so we could discuss this in private. So do you want... Well, the, the thing that... Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but the thing that I'm bringing up right. is... If 30 people got a red tag and nobody got turned off, why did I get turned off? No, I, no, I, I, I understand, though. That's all valid questions. What I'm saying is, do you want to continue this here and now? Yes. Or you want to go and reschedule it to executive session? I would, I would rather um, do it now because we're already up here. Okay. We're already discussing it. Okay. Um, some of the information has already been given. I'm sorry, what? There's questions about legalities, what we decided the last time. Right. I mean, part, I mean, like, we know a good portion of this needs to go to the attorney. And unfortunately, like you said, some of the questions that you're asking in regards to other people's accounts, um, I was looking at our open report, you know, and looking at some of these balances, and it doesn't even show me the names of who some of these people are right. that, you know, are just now getting scheduled to be shut off, and they owe thousands. Right, and if and there's so, and if there's nineteen thousand in arrears from right. them people, right. how many got shut off? Well, this and that's month? just it, you know. And I'm seeing somebody else that has a hundred thirty-seven dollar balance, and they're scheduled to be shut off. So where's what's the what's the, the determining factor, you guys? For but sure. Then there's other things here that he was advised by a lieutenant of the sheriff's office that they could not come on his property. It's two minute video that you really need to watch. They told him. They told uh, Joe Torres, and they told Tyra, and it's on video, body cam from the sheriff. Well, can you like message it to me? Um, yeah, you know, that. send it, send it to me via. But now this is you know, if, if we're going to do this, everyone needs to know the whole information. I I believe strongly that yes, he should have paid his bill. But I never said I shouldn't have paid the bill. I never said that I owed. But the didn't know that is money. The way that the process was carried out was against his best interest because it said three days. They done it in two. He had another day to pay, and he made arrangements with Mike to pay the bill for him. So, and then the next attempt he made, the office, the building was closed. I mean, and through that period of time, it was hard to get in here for the building to be closed. So all of this needs to be added into it. Yes, he didn't pay the bill. It was closed, what, due to COVID? No, it's closed no. because of... Chopper. Chopper. 
we were peaceful protesting and chalking outside, oh, so, so they locked the doors. Last, this is last year that you're talking doors. about, and not back in 2024. Oh, 2024 this year. Yes. yes. Okay. So, no. there's, there's a lot of side things to this, and none of that's in this for us to make a decision. Okay. I want to make it clear we keep hearing he only got two days. If you guys read this, I would suggest postponing it till you can read the packet. But he's been getting a delinquent notice in the mail and a red tag every month since July 18th of 23. Yes, the meter but if you was go back to your doctor. The meter was turned off on March, or taken away on March 7th of 24. So for over a year, he was getting a delinquent notice in the mail that everybody gets if you're late. And a red tag was being put on his gate every month since January 18th of 23. And I did go all the way back to 2020 to show that Robert would be behind and he would make payments and stick to an agreement. But also, that's so I, I not only what she's mind. saying. He never even asked shows. for a payment agreement. I mean, you can pull half the town that hates me. If they come in here and need a payment agreement, I give it to them because I'm legally obligated. You try to make them. one in a meeting. But one eighteen twenty three is he's been getting red tags every month and delinquent notices at his door. That is what. Okay, point of order. First, that she wasn't asked a question. I was trying to make a point whenever she said this, and you shut everyone else up. Why didn't you do it to her? Because she's been doing all of this on Robert. But I didn't ask her a question. And I was Nobody asked her that. Trying to make a point. So it's okay for her to interrupt me. But no one can interrupt sorry. you. Is that, is that her to her? No. Go ahead. No, I just want to know what the rules are. It's it's good for, what's good for me? And what's I thought you were done. I apologize. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Stephanie, for letting hard. you talk out of line. Sorry. From 2020 all the way up to here through her own documentation here this property has been in arrears it's been deals have been made a hundred different times since then but they've always been paid and there's also an ordinance in here that before that meter was pulled and it's even highlighted that this should have been a council decision before it was done and that didn't happen either there's a lot of there's two sides of this story and this is just part of one side because now I just seen paperwork where he signed the paper back in 2020 on this, and he explained it. But that wasn't in here, nor was an explanation. So I'm still saying the same thing. This needs to stop right now and let the attorney hear it. We so, don't have um, time to put his you agree to uh, the attorney. Um, I'm going to talk Wait, about just a couple things first. This Not case, a lot. Let him look at it. If they hired the attorney, let him look at this case, let him, and then the board would agree that whatever the attorney's decision is will be final. And you. He's got the, 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 I will not agree to that. No, I'm just saying, you know, so that he's going to make the decision because he has. Right. He, you well, know, he needs right. to be able to present in front of the attorney. Too. Right. So <coughs> right. I understand attorney. that, but he, right. uh, the attorney needs to look at all this first, right. and then he can also deal with Robert. also be done in front of all of us. Too. Right. Also, the day that they pulled the meter, I came into the office and asked for a payment plan, and Sarah told me that I did was not going to get a payment plan that I had to pay it in full. They did not give me the option for a it's payment a plan. I have that recorded on uh, on my phone. Okay, so do you agree? Let the attorney look at this, Robert. What benefit? Oh. And, and we'll present everything that you on your slide too. So you'll get to present everything, all your documentation, and everything to him as well. Well, that sounds good, but um, it's been almost seven months since they pulled the meter, and you guys haven't even looked at the actual laws that apply to this okay. uh, i looked them up a long time ago and i didn't i wasn't able to get copies paper copies or i would have presented those with all the paperwork that i gave you last month yeah. Th those are our federal laws that are in the books no, and that's why you know i press once you know burn you know, talk to me about some of this. This is, you know, one of the reasons I pushed for you. But I wanted you to present. Right. 
one because we got your you know we got your demand letter yeah. of the things that you wanted from us we got your doctor's paperwork but what i wanted from you was your timeline yeah. where you felt the infractions happened and i don't see that you brought that with you today um i you didn't have 15 days notice to put this together either so mm. is he supposed to carry it okay. and i didn't know it was even on the agenda until yesterday well, I talked to Vern about that last week, so I didn't know that there was a 15-day requirement. So well, we that's... just went through it with Tiber, didn't we? Right. 15 days before you pull someone in and question them like this. Right. And then he's supposed to have the option to do this in private, which he said he doesn't matter, but he wasn't given the option. These are the things I'm talking about being equal and fair to everyone. Oh, sure. I mean, I, I agree. I agree. It should be, it should be, you know, again, I question when I see these outstanding bills and people are, oh, one person has $137 balance and they're scheduled for shut off, but another person has $2,000 and, and they're scheduled for shut off. I mean, I went through the list too. Yeah. So and he owed at the time, what, $800? Right. But you got someone here at $3,200? And this is a point I tried making two to three meetings ago was those payment agreements. I don't know how you come up with it, but after the use of the electric, they pay a partial bill on what they owed and the uh, part on what was behind. They're going behind each month. They're getting further in debt to us with the payment agreement that wasn't offered. He wasn't able to get it. And if you think of the time period and what was going on, and he's got a, a good point of being harassed by the mayor and the town clerk because of everything else. And he was treated differently is what okay, my now, understanding who, is. Who actually pulls and installs meters? At the time, you know what? It showed up at his house. There was like what, three sir? police. There was Tyra. There was uh, Joe Porras. There was MGM. It was like... 20 people showed up at his house to pull the meter and here recorded the one i'm talking about is the lieutenant from the sheriff's office telling him that they have to have a warrant so his actions if the police are telling him he has to have a warrant why would we force our way in there i mean this is yeah i'm not saying that the town didn't do I'm, something I'm just wrong to argue i'm just trying so to get, get all of the street. facts and, and i can't seem to get that and to figure out what laws we're supposed to, I mean, because I know that there's federal laws for people that are at risk, but I also mm. know that there's town ordinances, so it's just yeah. this big circular mess. One, one of the federal laws also states that if the temperature drops 32 or below, the utility company is not supposed to even turn the gas or electric off. And, and that night it, it, it dropped to 31, it dropped to 32 the next night, it dropped to 30 the third night. So we need to find out how we're legally, I mean, we get in a lot of trouble over this one. That's why I was trying to um, get this resolved before my lawyer picks the case up and starts filing um, paperwork, uh, you know. I mean, can we, is there anything that we can do with even just you know, a, a, a small payment from you to, so we can get his thing back mm. installed, we get his meter back in, is there anything it, we can do right we, at this we moment? We really need to let the attorney go yeah. over it because... One of, one of the things um, about this case is because um, they got the medical paperwork and refused to put the meter back and it is still affecting my health, I can qualify for punitive damages in the civil suit and there is no cap on it. My attorney could actually ask for $20 million. And you guys have no way of defending the way the meter was pulled. Um, uh, and also when that Jesse Pacheco that was working here, he only worked that day and then the next day he quit. That day that he went in and pulled the meter, um, he did not take the lock off. So he wasn't able to close the, lock, the, the turn off switch on the meter and he was um heard saying on one of the body camera um that um he wasn't able to do that and then they weren't able to go back in uh, because my neighbor got there and he told him you guys don't have permission to go in there and w instead of telling the fire department that there was going to be a leak there because he couldn't shut it off all the way 
they left it like that for a whole week until I, I found out that it was leaking. That was his lock, but there's also a video where he told them directly, cut the thing off, the lock is not mine. <coughs> You, uh, he yep. made a cue several times in this of uh, putting okay, that lock so on there. Okay, so who would have put the, if it wasn't his lock, who would have put the lock on there? I don't know. I have no idea because it, it wasn't me. I didn't have a key. Nobody I told me they put a lock on it. I just assumed it was a town. Okay, I mean, unfortunately, we're, I would right. love to be able to do something for you tonight, but I think uh, we have to go. Right. Thing. No, I, that's what I'm saying. Is that, I mean, he would I already like, asked him if he's willing right. to, right. if the board agrees to hire the attorney, right. if Robert's willing to let I the just attorney wanted to take, explore you know, if there was anything that we could do for him tonight until we can get in front of the attorney but i just don't think that the, the, no. there is robert i am i'm trying to look well, at well i'm not asking for all of the stuff that i put in the paperwork to get done tonight right. um but something to show good faith that you guys are willing to work with me without me having to file the civil suit because i i really don't want to file it um it's uh, you know and as soon as I file it and it goes in front of a judge, um, the town has no way of defending all of the stuff that they did. The paperwork wasn't done right. Um, them coming on the property wasn't done right. Them pulling the meter and shutting it off wasn't done right. Yeah, that's what I was just trying to get to you guys before we close this meeting down. Is, okay. is there anything that we can do tonight? Just some show of something to let him know that we're there's nothing that any of us feels like we can do. Is there something you have in mind that we can do? To well, one thing would be to um, eliminate the um, the um, charges that I own. I think we could look at maybe some of the past due. I mean, I, I think right. from what I'm understanding, some of what happened, if the lawyer determines um, once we give it to him, I, I think we could definitely wipe out some of those past due and penalties, couldn't we? If we do it for one, we have to do it for everyone. Well, but That's what, I, what I'm reading in this, well, uh, you gotta, you gotta you gotta meter too. what I'm reading in this is started out with a bill of like uh, $800 and it's up over 2000 now in the meters they go. Okay, well, but it doesn't, doing it for one, doing for everybody doesn't really apply here because this is no. a very unique situation. It is, yes. Right. Um, what has happened with Robert has not happened with other people in town. This is a, a, a pretty standalone thing. Okay, and, and we're no going to have no one to move on, here. so. No one sitting here knows all the details to no, it because right. everyone's only heard part of it. Robert, And he does have legitimate. With, all your information and everything that you have, documentation and stuff, and you can present it to the attorney. Sound good? Would you agree to an executive session so we could all sit here and understand this? Yes. This really shouldn't be done here. I agree too. I mean, there, there is a time? there is a lot of stuff in the paperwork that um should not be shared publicly. Yeah, no, but, I mean, obviously there's personal, yeah, That's a good question, you know. but now this is more confidential, and I haven't said a thing to the public about it, but now we discussed it here. This is public information. I did bring up, when we were talking about putting this on the agenda, going into executive session on this, and so but that wasn't didn't. done. All right. But we didn't, and we done it here. And mm -hmm. so that makes this public information. And I keep getting accused yeah. of talking about town business. Yeah. And I'd like to clarify that. If it's public information, I got every right to talk about it. And I'll continue to talk about it. I have not said anything about executive sessions or plans of the town. And it wasn't me who went to the newspaper. I think it was water attorney Ken Torres that made a whole report to the newspaper about our executive sessions. 
I ain't heard a word said about what we're going to do about that. So can we move on? Yeah. You agree? Yes. Okay. So can I get a motion to table this until <coughs> I make a motion that we get once we get the attorney hired, we then um, schedule an executive yeah. session specifically to deal with the Robert Avila situation. Second. Yeah, or, yeah, executive session. <laughs> Next. Who, yeah, uh, Monica or, or Frank? Frank. Frank. Thank you, Robert. Yes. I have a problem with motion for a Robert Avila situation. It's more like a Tom Aguilar situation. Ms. Adams? Okay, I'll amend the motion. The Town of Aguilar and Robert Avila situation. Yes. Mr. Brahas? Yes. Ms. Gauna? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? Yes. Okay, Black Hills quote for cathodic survey. That's the last on our list. What is cathodic? What is that? It's what? Cathodic. They check the lines and it's used to keep the lines from corroding. So they come in and they test all the lines and so enclosed you'll find Right. That's what these guys do, but for like on a bigger scale. And so, how often does this have to be done? Once every year, right. once every year, not to exceed fifteen months. <laughs> Thanks, Harry. You're welcome. And this has to be done to uh, take care of our 2023 gas audit. This has to be done to make us pass that. So we have to. So we will be current. And so what's I'm trying to see the document. So what's the total survey? What's, I'm seeing a total of ten thousand here, fourteen hundred here. Doc, here's the fees. The last two pages. There's fees that he said he wasn't. He gave us a quote of four thousand five hundred twenty dollars and twenty one cents, but he's going to try and keep it under that if at all possible or as close to that. But <laughs> I mean, you go to page eight, right? I mean, I'm seeing that, and yeah, it's great. Yeah, you know, yet one more thing we need to be in compliance with, but where's the money? Yeah. <laughs> why buy? And we have to get so we OQ'd by. No, that's oh, that one. That's so oh, wait, 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 wait. I think we have till the end of it. Yeah, October. I saw it. It's if it's okay with the group, I've got some information on the grant that will help us with this. So that I could send it to uh, the girls in the office, Angela or someone. Because when we consider this, you wrote, it'd be good if you would read this information. There's uh, several billion dollars set aside on these problems, and it appears like we qualify for it. So how would we, I mean, but then we need a grant writer, right? To Anyone need a write budget. a grant. I'm sorry? Anyone can write a grant. You don't have to be specially grant writer. We but need a budget. This, this, a budget for a grant? Yes. That is why they've had some issues because we don't have a budget, an actual budget. So, at, um, but you're going to be working on that with the gal from Dola, right? To get those budgets done. Um, and we've just done 2019, what I heard. That's the audit. audit. The budgets are different from the audit. So, that's where. We have such a problem because we don't have a budget 23 and 24, correct? 
Right. And here we are almost at the end of 2024. Yeah, and then we start 2025. 2025 in next month. I have some good information to share with you whenever we're ready. Okay. Is it in regards to the grant, different grants and stuff, or just can for the you gas to upgrade the town and the oh, upgrade the town? Well, I mean, does that kind of fall under this? F or do we need to put that on another no, meeting? This, this okay. basically is what we need to get done, done. as soon as possible. That. He has time, they have time next week, but we have to know if we can okay. do Are they this open? Are today. they open to payments? You know, 500, Black 500, Carol's, 500? I think, understands for uh, yeah. our financial. They were at one of our meetings. Okay. So they're aware of, okay. Uh, I would. Okay, so I make a motion that, yeah, I mean, if we are getting it done to approve, if they're willing to do a payment plan. A payment plan that the board agrees on. Well, I'm in that payment plan, a payment, <laughs> say that 10 times fast, payment plan. <laughs> payment plan that the board agrees on. Second. Brokaw? Yeah, Brotem? Yes. Miss Adams? Yes. Mr. Brahas? Yes. Miss Gilman? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? Yes. Motion passed. Correspondence? What's on that? We're done with correspondence. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Can I get a second? I second. Yeah, he motioned. I said. Brokaw? Mayor Yes, ma'am. Miss Adams? Yes. Mr. Brahma? Yes. Miss Gilna? Yes. Mr. Romero? Yes. Mr. Thorne? Yes. Can you adjourn?